Hi there. I recently picked up this lovely old Mark IV Merco 61 and I am really excited to get this in my test stand and see how it runs. These are real workhorses. They're, they're great engines. It's, uh, it's, as I said, it's a Mark IV and this was released in 1973. So it's nearly, what, 50 years old. It's got twin bearings. It's got a steel liner for the piston to run in and the piston is aluminium and it's got a single conventional ring. Some of the earlier Mercos, I think the Mark III had a Dykes piston ring but then they changed back to this. And it's quite interesting because if you take the head off then the thinned cylinder here is actually a separate attachment that pulls off. The piston, as I said, it's an aluminium piston but because it's a, a cross-flow design, uh, cross-flow design engine, it's got a flat top on the piston and there's a single baffle to direct the exhaust gases so they don't get, the theory is so they don't get mixed up with the exhaust coming in, uh, sorry, the, um, the fuel coming in and the exhaust gases going out. Now the carb is uh, an original Merco carb with twin needles so and that seems to operate really nice and it's got this nice brass work here so I think that will be really really good. It also came along with this Merco original peak power muffler Now these mufflers were introduced with the Mark III uh, uh, Merco 61 and that was in 1968 and these are these are amazing bits of kit. They're they're not flimsy. They're really solid. They're not sheet metal. They're not uh, molded or anything like that. These are actually machined from a solid piece of aluminium bar. And I'll take it apart in a minute, and we'll have a look inside, and you can see the you can see the machining. So these are really great. And, and it's got a, a nipple on it here for a pressure feed. I don't think that is original, but it's useful because obviously I, it's, it's much better if we can pressure feed the, the tank. And the, the head itself can be taken off. So what you can do, sorry, it can be rotated. So you can put the muffler on like that with the exhaust pointing, pointing down or you can rotate the head so it's pointing that way or that way. Funnily enough, that seems to be the direction that it's shown in, in sort of advertising brochures and manuals, which is quite a long way forward. It, but there's no reason at all why it can't be put on that way. And so you've got the, the exhaust a little bit further back. And again, you can rotate the head to point whichever way you want. You can even point it into your plane if you want and collect all the oil that's coming out. One of the things that I was slightly concerned about when I got this is that the few pictures I've seen have shown the outlet here to be cut off at about a 45 degree angle. And I was slightly concerned somebody had uh, taken the, just cut that off square. But having had a look at it with a, a magnifying glass, you can see that that's a machined end. That hasn't been cut off. You can see the machine marks on it. So I'm, I'm really pleased about that. It's, it's, it's nice that it hasn't been, um, hasn't been messed around with. Well, I've got this stripped down now and cleaned, and uh, we can just see with the, the head of the, of the muffler, the pipe, exhaust pipe, just fits into that, and then is held in with a screw at, uh, at that end. And if I hold this up to the camera, hopefully you can see how that's been machined. As I said, just from a, a, a solid bar of, uh, of aluminium. I think that's amazing. I think this is just such a, a, a lovely, lovely uh, dustbin muffler. Just back to the engine, you can see uh, probably I put cap screws in there. These are 5 UNC. Uh, the reason being that the, the original screws were quite hard to get out. They were quite chewed up and I didn't want to risk putting them back in, causing damage and possibly getting them stuck in. So I put these cap screws in for the moment and I'm going to leave those while I'm running it for a bit. 
while I see if I can get some proper replacement screws to, to put in there. So I think that's about all to be said on this. And like I say, I am really excited to be getting to the airfield later and to giving this a run and see how it, how it performs. Hi, well, I've just arrived at my local airfield and I've got this lovely old Merco 61, which I can't wait to get into the test stand and get it fired up. I've put on a 11 by 6 master air screw prop and the plug I'm running is a OS number 8 and my fuel is always, it's a 7% nitro mix with 20% castor and synthetic. Well, that was an interesting run. And actually, it ran really, really good in the end. But I, I don't think I've ever seen an engine throw out quite as much oil, fuel, smoke. Uh, it was coming out of everywhere, really. <laughs> um, there, there, was, there was fuel dripping out from the front here between the, the prop driver and the crankshaft. And that was quite a drip, actually. It's a, a, a bearing, it's a new bearing, and it's got a, a shield on it which obviously won't stop that. 
but what I might think about doing is putting a, a bearing on there with a seal and see how that runs because it's not only losing the fuel and, and there was quite a bit of fuel coming out of there it's also losing crankcase pressure so I need to think about that maybe take a, a, a bit of advice a lot of smoke coming out of the dustbin muffler which actually worked quite nicely the the, the sound was uh, wasn't too bad from such a big engine I, I did lose a, a couple of couple of screws that, that vibrated loose but I managed to, find, managed to find those so I'm quite I'm quite pleased about that because they're quite a small size as far as the actual running at first it was so rich really really rich and I had to keep dialing in that low speed needle and I thought I'd got it right and then and it was running lovely nice uh, nice idle down at about two and a half three thousand picking up pretty pretty instantly there was a very slight hesitation but then it kind of seemed to lose that and so I tried tuning in again and after a bit I noticed that with the vibration the low speed needle was actually screwing itself out so I'd adjust it rev it up a few times and I could see as I opened the throttle the needle would just twist a little bit so I took the low speed needle out and I just stretched the spring, put a, more, a, a, a little bit more pressure on it and that seemed to cure it. I didn't stretch, overly stretch it, just a, maybe it made it maybe one, two mil longer and that seemed to be enough pressure just to hold it in place. So, but that, that was quite interesting at first because I couldn't work out what was going on and then every time I opened the throttle I could just see the needle opening out a little bit and richening, richening it up again. So, but once it got going, the, the, it held a really nice idle at about two and a half thousand up to three thousand. I hadn't got the throttle stop set, so a little bit of the idle, whether it was low or high, was down to me and the throttle control. The top end was about twelve thousand RPM, and it held it lovely. And uh, so, I'm really pleased with this engine. It runs really nice. A couple of things I need to. To work on but uh, I think I might try and put this in a trainer I've got and and just see how it flies because it'll be great to get this this lovely old engine from the the, the the 1970s up in the air again 